Go 123 is just around the corner and typically Go releases bring excitement and joy for people to try new features. But this particular release has a lot of Go developers very upset and we're going to find out why. So Go 123 is expected to be released in August 2024. So that's about a month from the time this video is being recorded. And there's lots of cool features in this release, but the one I'm gonna talk about is the Range Over Funk experiment. Now, the Range Over Funk basically introduces iterators to Go. The range clause in a four range loop now accepts iterator functions of the following types. You can see here, calls of the iterate argument function produce the iteration values for the for range loop. Follow details to see the iter package documentation. So this is a new package that's going to be in the standard library. And you can see here to click for the range or funk discussion. And this will eventually lead you to the pull request, which is now closed for the new iter package for iterators. You can see here, there is a description with a bunch of different types. And we're going to go into that in just a second. But you may be asking yourself, well, why are people upset? So there's a really interesting tweet that can kind of start us off here from Anton Zayanov. I'm sorry, but Go is going in the wrong direction with range or functions, iterators, etc. The core premise of the language was simplicity. Why the Go team is so eager to flush it down the drain is beyond me. You can see here, this is an example of a function that returns an iterator, so an iterator function. You can see here, it takes a type E, which is generic any, and it has this function that returns a function, takes another function. You can see here, it's it, it doesn't look pretty, but essentially all this function does is it iterates backwards over this slice of strings. And so Ginger Bill created this really nice article that said why people are angry over Go 123 iterators. It shows the exact same example. I'll link into the description below. But I think really the best kind of article I was able to find came from Alexander Vyalkin, Go evolves in the wrong direction. So essentially he's talking about how Go is simple to use, but this paragraph really summarizes it well for me. Some software engineers call Go boring and outdated since it lacks of advanced features from other programming languages such as monads, option types, LINQ, borrow check with zero cost abstractions, etc. Etc. Et While these features may simplify writing code for specific domains, they have non zero costs additionally to benefits. These features are usually good for brain workout, but we don't need additional mental load when dealing with production code since we're already busy solving business tasks. The main cost of all these features is increased complexity of the resulting code. And he lives some good reasons here. And he gives one good example with generics, where basically Go generics were introduced all the way back in Go 118. And he says it here, the overall adoption of generics in Go remains low. Why? Because generics aren't needed in most of practical Go code. So. I personally do see a point here. I don't really see generics being a game breaker for me when I kind of used generics or really don't use generics in Go. But I think the point that he made in this article is the simplicity and the fact that Go was and still is to this date, a very simple language for you to pick up and use. And the reason why people are so upset over this iterator package, like I introduced earlier, is it really makes the code look kind of ugly, kind of complex, kind of bizarre, and just not really simple or readable, which is contradicting to what Go originally was adopted for. So I chose to kind of take a very simple example into my VS code here. I have a function that basically is an iterator, which just squares values from a slice of ints. So you can see here I have nums. It is a slice of integers, one, two, three, four, five. And I can now showcase the range over funk from go 123. Now you can see here, this is go 122, but to experiment with that feature, you can all you have to do is write go experiment equals range funk go run. You can see here, this is I, which is four, and this is X, it's 25. So I being the index of the value in our slice and X being the value that we are squaring going backwards. So we actually starting from five, which is the fourth index in our slice and squaring it so forth and so forth. And how this works is we have this squared function, which takes in our slice of ints and it basically returns a function, which takes in another function, which takes in an X and I argument of ints. It returns a Boolean. And basically this Boolean is used here to evaluate if we want to continue our iterator function. So if yield is false, then we stop our iterator and we stop passing in the values to our squared function. Now this seems fairly okay, but where the problem actually gets a little wonker is when we start looking into the iter package. So I have the iter package here and it's fairly simple, fairly contained, but it introduces something that I'm kind of scratching my head about. And that is the type seek and type seek two, which basically are types used for function signatures. And it also introduces 
introduce two functions called pull and pull two. And you may be looking at these, why is it one, two? Basically, this means that the number of variables this iterator function is able to take in. So seek, the, the signature for seek takes in one, which is V, whereas seek two takes in two, which is K and V. You can see here for each pair in the sequence. So now I'm gonna use that iter package in my square iterator function here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and use the uh, iter signatures. So you can do iter dot seek to because our iterator function our yield function takes in two arguments our x and i and it's going to be instantiated with just int int and that's it we don't have to kind of add any return values here we can save this and we can go ahead and run the exact same thing you can see that we get the exact same value here so all it does is a method signature but where i think it gets way too wonky is in this proposal which is currently open for another package called X zitter or zitter, I'm gonna pronounce it X iter, new package with iterator adapters. And yeah, it just gets kind of weird. It adds basically helper functions to use in iterators. You can you can see there's concat, concat to equal, equal to, equal func, equal func to, filter, filter to, limit, limit to, map, map to. And it's just something that I kind of am having a hard time understanding where they've made this cap on the number of variables these methods for iterators can take in, which is two. And they actually explain it in the proposal of why, you know, why they kind of capped it at two per sequence element to yield. But overall, I do kind of see the point that both Anton and Ginger Bill are making here, uh, as well as Alexander, because the code for iterators, it just doesn't look clean. I think ranging over functions is totally fine, but getting into this sort of, you know, weird territory of how a function is supposed to look with this, you know, you have a function declared, which takes in this interesting, you know, method signature to what? Hide the fact that it's just the function keyword here twice. And then down here, you're returning a function with the yield keyword with another function. So personally, obviously you guys know I love Go, but this is just really hard to read, especially if you kind of go back here, it's just like almost unreadable. You can change it to only accept one parameter to yield on. So let's say just X and then you use iter.seek instead of seek two. But I think you guys get the point at this level. In conclusion, it is sad that Go started evolving in a direction of increased complexity and in implicit code execution. But yeah, I think the iterators are a little bit too complicated for me. And uh, I don't know if I necessarily like them. All right, so you guys let me know, what do you think about the new Go 123? Are you enjoying iterators? Do you think it's kind of blown out of proportion with the complexity of the syntax? Or do you think this that actually make a lot of sense? And this is a little, I don't know, not so Go like. Let me know in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And you gotta power it.